In today's show, we get another great recipe from Simon Gold in What's Cooking with Simon. Charles George from Colonial Hot Tubs is back to talk about why hot tubs can be great for your well-being. And then we get an all-access pass to one of Auckland's most exclusive fashion events. And you're on the invite list. Let me show you how easy it is with two pots to cook a Galt's Deli beef charizzo and smoked paprika risotto. Everything comes in the kit with the exception of one onion, half a cup of white wine and three tablespoons of butter. It's really easy and we'll deliver to your door. You just got to do the cooking and you got to find somebody to do the dishes. Let's go. Finely chop one onion, grate your wedge of parmesan cheese, get one litre of boiling water and mix three tablespoons of the beef concentrate that supply with the hot water. Measure three tablespoons of butter approximately. Stack your chavezzo and slice it into strips. Bring the beef stock and the butter to a boil and then turn it off extra virgin olive oil to your pot and put it onto a medium to high heat. As soon as your olive oil heats up, in we go the onions. Saute the onions for about three minutes without adding any colour and until the onions are soft. Then we add the rice. Give it a stir. We're going to toast the rice in here for two minutes while stirring. After two minutes, the rice will start to crackle. It's almost like it's talking to you when it starts to crackle after a couple of minutes of being toasted, saying, I need a glass of wine. So we'll give it half a glass, and if you're feeling generous, you can add a little extra wine. And you can see the rice pretty much absorbs it straight away. You can see the bottom of the top is pretty much dry. Now, give your stock and butter a stir and a couple of ladles at a time. Now we are going to stir this in and once that has been absorbed we can safely add some more. Just as soon as the rice pot is dry on the bottom when you scrape it through like that you can safely add some more of the butter stock mixture. And then once this is absorbed, we can safely add some more. In this process, adding all those ladles will take about 20 minutes, at which stage the rice will be al dente, and we'll be good to serve. Just keep repeating this process when the pot is dry at the bottom. Add some more stock. It'll take, as I said, about 20 minutes, and you'll be good to go. When you're getting down to the last of your stock, and you've had a taste, and it's rice is still a fraction al dente, you're getting very close. And you can see it's very soupy in consistency. So at which stage now I will add the smoked paprika in there. And it's quite powerful. You can start off by adding a little bit and add more if you like, but I know that's going to be just perfect. In goes the charizzo. And almost all of the parmesan cheese, but I want you to save some just for sprinkling over the top. There you go. Save a couple of tablespoons that I can use over the top, and now just in case of stirring this up. You can see it's thickened up. The cheese thickens it up. The smoked paprika is going through there. This is La Vidalia smoked paprika and it's beef charizzo. It's delicious on its own, but in here it's even better. And we're not cooking it, we're just warming it up at this 
last stage. So I'm going to turn the heat off now and I want it to be just a little bit runnier and that's why I've saved the last of that stock. Just about all of it in and I'll put a lid on and go and get my plates organised. Caramelized balsamic, which is going to be the magic that I'm going to add over the top. And you'll have some left over. And you just fill the pipette with the caramelized balsamic. Now I've got enough easily to do eight people here. And I want to a generous portion. It just oozes over the plate. Well, there is nothing better than relaxing in your own backyard at the end of a stressful day and have you considered that a hot tub may be the way to do it we're here to share a little bit of his wisdom on how hot tubs are created is the owner and creator of colonial hot tubs welcome charles george to the studio thanks mate nice so to good to have here. you yeah, yeah great to catch up with you again after this co uh, covid lockdown time yeah. so tell me that's that's created a lot of stress for people and of course Getting some relaxation in a hot tub is one of the ways to demystify or de-stress at the end of a busy day. Yes. Tell me about your journey with Colonial Hot Tubs. So back in the 80s, my brother purchased Colonial Hot Tubs off uh, Brian Holloway, who started the company, designed and built hot tubs. I've got the original sketches and drawings and, and, um, and pricing from, from way back in the day. And so I did it out of the garage um, under his house for years and years and years until the neighbours kicked him out. <laughs> and, uh, and then he ended up in a, in a storage unit out in the back of uh, Mount Wellington somewhere. And um, I've grown up with hot tubs because we'd always have a hot tub to play in all the time. So, you know, as soon as, you know, he got the company, he had to have the demo model in his backyard, which was the biggest and best one. And uh, we had a lot of fun on that. And so I've just grown up being in hot tubs, knowing about them, mm. how to run them um, and wow. build them. And so uh, over the years, I've come and gone from overseas and I'd often come back for a summer where it was, you know, I was uh, working part time and taking odd jobs and I'd often work with Cy, building the tubs and helping him install them more than anything else. And, um, and then, um, in 2011, unfortunately, so I passed away and we were overseas at the time and uh, my wife and I thought, you know, we could go back and give that a go. We had a couple of young kids, we're looking to get back to New Zealand and thought, let's go and do that. So that took a little bit of mobilising and we got back to New Zealand and, um, and just started answering the phone mm. and uh, building hot tubs and um, just me with the phone out of a garage. Um, but now we've um, managed to evolve a little bit and try to keep up with the times and we haven't touched the way we built the hot, hot tubs at all, but what we put on them is is improved. You know, we've got better systems and everything. So wow. the way we build them is, is the original way and, uh, and, you know, but we've grown it now. We've got factory with, uh, you know, a few people helping me out. Um, great, great bunch of staff that we have there and, you um, very caring people and mm. thoughtful people and uh, that have an eye for detail and um, and yeah here we are so we I'm trying to give the same thing to my kids they're growing up with a hot tub yeah. in their backyard and they love it that's one of their favorite things you know as soon as they've scoffed their dinner down it's like hey, 
can I go and hop in the hot tub? So one of the things which is really unique is that they are handcrafted and they follow the traditional coopering style. I read that on your website. Yes. So yeah. tell me, what is that? So coopering uh, is generally related to building wine barrels. So it's it's kind of it's to to be simple. It's about uh, retaining liquid using only wood. So so we build our hot tubs uh, out of wood only. So there's no plastic liner on the inside. It's just wood. All the walls are wood. The base is wood. The seats are wood. And the art of coopering is is um, putting the very precise angles on each piece of wood to make the make the joint just continuous and solid. And then when the wood gets wet and expands, it uh, that that closes up any any holes or leak points. And once wow. it's wet. Uh, then it becomes a usable hot tub. And of course it'll be watertight as well. Yeah. That's, uh, that's absolutely that's, incredible. It's like yeah. a little bit of magic using nature. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> a natural product. So a lot of people who have seen your um, ads in our show yeah. or seen you on television, that sort of yeah. thing, they've, people have reached out to me because they yeah. do. Yeah. And they've said to me, I mean, I love the look of the hot tub, but what's the difference between a hot tub and a spa pool as an example? Yeah. So the biggest thing is the... The way that it's laid out so in a hot tub it's deeper so you're sitting upright with the water still over your shoulders and because of that you're you're more buoyant and because with you also with your feet down in the middle sitting upright you, it's a lot slightly more relaxing because you're floating you're a bit more weightless and then also if you want to lay out you can you can stretch your legs out under the seat across from you because a hot tub has benches inside it whereas a Plastic pool is moulded and it goes like that, and so you're restricted as to where you can put your feet. Oh, wow. More often than not, in a spa pool, you are lying flat, and and your legs can float up, and and it's hard. It's for me, it's not as comfortable. Mm. Whereas when you're sitting in a hot tub, you get to dictate what you, how you sit, mm. you know. Whereas you're not you're not told where to sit by a plastic shape, of and course. so that's the biggest difference. And um, Always the old one, the cold shoulder syndrome is a big one for me. So you can sit in the hot tub and, and it's just your, just your neck. Sticking, you know, <laughs> and then, of course, that. we've got the sustainability aspect because, you yeah. know, spa pool has that, that plastic liner effectively as opposed yes. to what you produce with a colonial hot tub. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So so being entirely made of wood, you know, the, the a piece of plastic will, will last a lot longer than a piece of wood. But if you look at the whole life cycle of of the, the tub or spa pool that you have. Um, when a plastic spa pool goes into landfill, it's there for a hell of a long time. Mm -hmm. Whereas when a piece of wood goes into landfill, it, at the end of the life cycle of the hot tub, it's not there for long at all. It just mm. goes back into nature. Which is always good for the planet, right? That's right, yeah. yes. Yeah. You know, every time I've chatted to you, you are literally one of the most relaxed people I know. And I know that's because <laughs> you hop in the hot tub most days, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah and yeah. my understanding too is that a lot of your um, clients also have talked to you at great length about the benefits that they've experienced, whether it's well-being or or, well, you know the yeah. story. So tell yeah. me about what they've experienced. Yeah, so... so as couple of points to touch on there. Um, people that do a lot of exercise, um, triathletes and, and ultramarathon runners and things, the, the recovery. So s sitting in a hot tub uh, will increase blood flow around the body. Mm. So that, that aids recovery from, you know, extreme exercise. So I get a lot of people and, and temperature can have an effect on that as well. So you can vary the temperature of your hot tub to whatever you like. It can be cold if you want. It can be real cold or hot. <laughs> um, I, for me, one of the best things that that uh, that I use my hot tub for is is a good sleep. So I will do everything that I would normally do before going to bed, and the last thing I do is have my hot tub. I literally go from the hot tub to my bed, and and I'm I'm asleep in minutes, and it's a deep sleep. Wow! So I find the, the when I wake up in the morning after having my hot tub, I, I'll know I'll know the difference between. The nights that I haven't had a hot tub and the nights that I have. And uh, it's just a, a way nicer sleep for sure, yeah. deeper and longer. And one of the things that you mentioned too is mm. is when we've chatted previously is about the ability to bring the family together. And you've experienced that firsthand as well, right? That's right. Yeah, well, so with the with the kids, you know, as soon as they've had their dinner, they just want to get in the hot tub. Um, and 
you know, on those days when you're at home, the kids are, what are we doing now? What can we do now? We'll go and hop in the hot tub and that's them for an hour. So that's a, it can be a babysitter. The, <laughs> um, the conversations that we have when we're in there together, you know, it's, it's real one-on-one time. And if you're lucky enough to get one-on-one with the kids or have them as a group, mm. you know, they've developed all these little games that they play. Well, my kids are quite young, you know, so little games that they play. So it's not quite as relaxing as it normally would be without the kids in there. But um, yeah, it's, as a family activity, it's it's hard to beat, you know, in your backyard. You don't have to go anywhere and you can, mm. you know, it's entertainment for everyone. And I guess the, the big mm. question I want to know is, is have, have your clients who have had one fitted into their homes and then looked at selling their property as an example, have they yeah. noticed that that's been a real draw card for real estate agents, for, for people looking to buy a home? Has it added value to the property? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So it's kind of... <clears throat> It's another tool in the toolbox of the real estate agent um, to say, you know, hey, yes, this is a great home, has all these bedrooms and a, and a kitchen and a bathroom and all the usual things, but hey, look at the hot tub. And um, if the hot tub, particularly if it's been installed well, mm. you know, and it looks like it's supposed to be there and it's functional, really, really easy to use, mm. um, it's it's definitely going to add value to that, to that bottom line on the house. Mm. And, and also, you know, there's a, can be a bit of fear around hot pools as far as management of the hot pools, but you know we that's what one of our things is talk to the customer, find out what they want, how they want to use it, and we can set it up to be as easy or as you know time consuming as they want awesome. to manage. Awesome, yeah. great. Well, look, final thing I wanted to touch on because people have seen your product and have again messaged me going, "I love that." What's the cost? So. And you don't, hot you tubs, don't. Colonial hot tubs, I see them sitting at the top of the pile as far as price goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what you get with that is um, the ability for bespoke hot tubs. So we can, if you want it, we can build it mm. um, and within reason. <laughs> um, but but the, the key thing is, you know, we will come to your home and talk, talk it through with you, like I said, and figure out what you want. Um, and, and, you know, if there's a, a price point you want to hit, talk to us about that because our thing is that we want to do everything as well as we can, but there are options as well. Um, we have pricing options too so that you can, you can pay it off over a long period of time. You can be soaking away in your hot tub and pay it off over a couple of years if you want to and uh, reaping the benefits before actually most of the money goes out the door. That sounds good to me. I want one. I want one right now. (laughs) Hey, well, look, Charles, thank you so much for joining me. And if you want to find out more about how you can have that beautiful relaxation experience in your own home, a better night's sleep, or add value to your property, head to their website, hottubs.co.nz. Charles, thank you. A pleasure as always. Thank you, Monique. Great to be here. co-creator of Fashion Club and Art. This is the gorgeous celebrity auctioneer. This is Alan Myers. Kia ora, Alan. How are you doing? Kia ora, yeah. Monique. Looking good. This good is too. spectacular. Tell me about your outfit. We'll just wait for the camera to come back up and then we'll find out. So much going on. So much art. So tell me, what was the inspiration for your well, outfit? Well, basically, Versace's always been one of my favourite brands, and it's, uh, so the belt is actually Versace and the glasses, and then I just added to it, and what I could consider that theme or style, the grandiose, you know, I love it. You know. Uh, I, I'm a lover of Versace, Gucci, Chanel. I love them all because I see. Well, you're looking fantastic. Well, thank tonight you. Too. Well, thank I you. I am well. super excited about yeah. this. This was actually a custom design from Cecilia, made originally for me. So I believe we're going to see some fashion as well today based on, perhaps I was Cecilia's muse, I'm going to take that if I am, but based on some really classic caftan designs. So you're going to you're going to get some sneak peeks of that as well. I love it. So anything that, for me, a fashion, because we can talk about this. We could yeah. talk about this all day. Fashion for me is art. And I've noticed you've added the term art into the name of this exclusive club. So what's that about? So the art actually is to combine both fashion and people from the arts as well, and mm. also treating fashion as an art form, obviously. Mm. Creativity of any sort. Mm. So you're tonight we've got uh, musicians, um, people from the film industry, all around you know, the theme of art. 
So, you know, um, and we, uh, we'll, you'll hear later on what we're looking at doing. Oh, it's super exciting. And of course, part of Cecilia's journey is yeah. about her finding her identity through her art as a designer. And we're immensely proud. You've been friends with Cecilia for a long time? Yeah, probably about four or five years. But I, um, when I first saw her fashion show, uh, at a What Woman Want actually uh, event, I actually was in tears. It was so beautiful. Yeah, I totally it was agree. Beautiful. I totally agree. Emotional. I was, at, I was at the same event and I remember that all happening and I was like, oh my God, this is so much more than just what we wear. It's how we identify. So, Alan, we're going to hear more from you later you today. Are. And isn't it great? Look, we're bringing the red carpet back to Auckland. I like know. It's like, it's like a hospital Oscar's going on here. What I love about it is there's so many people that I know in here. Yeah. And being able to greet each other in real life is so much joy. So thanks for being, bringing a bit of joy back to Auckland. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So there you have it. So much art, so much fashion. Amazing. Do you know what I love about this? Before we even start your interview, what I love is that both you and Alan have brought together so many people from different walks of life and who are all, as Soxie just said, they're not dressed to what most people would think is on trend right now. They're dressing for their identity. How does that feel for you? Uh, it feels really amazing to be yourself. And I think people always need to be yourself. Don't, you know, we are the leaders of the world. We're not following trends. And I feel like it's, you know, best thing is to just to be yourself at the end of the day and to be who you are. And we're trying to create a platform where people can be themselves at the end of the day. So of course, we've already interviewed you previously for TV and I, I learned so much from that interview, even though I've known you for some years. Just learning about how for you, your fashion, your art helped you find your identity. Tell me about this club for you. What it, what does this mean for you, this organisation? Um, so this organisation is all about being passionate about fashion. And it's about you know, creating a platform where people love fashion and people want to come and to be themselves and trying to discover a bit more about the fashion with, you know, in the member of people. And it's about exchanging information and, you know, latest trends and to, um, to share information. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously a big lean in this group towards the utilisation of art for fashion and identity. So what does, how has that art inspired you to create your fashion? Um, for me, I always love to meet new people. You know, to me as a designer, I always need to come up with new designs and meeting new people kind of gives me that sense of, lot of, you know, sense of inspiration that I need to push my boundaries and comfort zone. And so um, for me, most of my designs come from me, you know, meeting new people, different walks of life. And, and I think that's how I actually want to form a group where people can come together, you know, with fashion. Absolutely, and I think what's been a real challenge, of course, is we've had COVID and everybody's been so isolated. It's disrupted Fashion Week, of course. So being able to create this platform, as you say, to bring people together, it's kind of what people are craving right now. Would that be fair? Yes, I kind of agree at the moment um, because of COVID and you know all the um, pandemics that's going me around the world at the moment. I feel like people are hungry to come out, you know, to be themselves, you know, and want to kind of enjoy life. And I feel like fashion plays a major part in people's lives. Totally agree. Now, tell me very quickly about your inspiration for the designs we've just seen. You guys didn't necessarily get to see them, but you will. So tell us about the ins inspiration behind your latest creations. Um, I think my latest, cre you know, latest creation, inspiration behind it is um, heavily on New Zealand nature. Um, heavily on New Zealand nature, you know, animals. You know, I like to use different sorts of feathers to create different textures. So I think it's just about heavily influenced in the New Zealand nature. Mm, I love that, I love that. And I have to say, I'm actually really honoured to be wearing Cecilia today. And I remember a few years ago, and this shows you the diverse um, a range of clothing she's created and that fashion is art and that it's about inclusivity as well. Um, what I love Cecilia is that several years ago I said to you, we were talking about fashion and, and Cecilia basically said, I'm going to make you a caftan. And this was what she created. This is what you created for me. 
and while it's had a few different lives, lots of people have worn it. When I reached out to Cecilia and I said, I need something to wear, and she said, I've got your caftan. How often does a designer create a garment for you? I'm so immensely honored. So tell me about how you've been able to take this art, because I've seen several people wear this now. How have you been able to create this art or take your art and make it into something for everyone? Because that is something that's immensely unique. Um, it's about having the sense of fashion and eye for fashion as well, to see, and I think that comes from meeting with different people and you know, um, engage, engaging with a lot of people to kind of understand their characters. You know, and, and I feel I feel like that's very important. You know, to kind of kind of experience a lot of different things in life and just go through that. You know, experience of experimental things in life with people. Yeah. Well, I I think that works really well because at the end of the day, this is about for me is about drama. And I am about drama. Not, I'm not drama queen. That's for sure. But I think, I think, I'm all about the drama, right? I think my, I think my life has been quite dramatic as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think so yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's where all most of my influence and inspiration comes from. Oh well, look. I love it and the feedback that I'm getting from everyone is they have loved this experience. So a, a big thank you to Cecilia, to you and to Ellen for, for leading the charge and bringing people back together because I think we all know this is what we need right now. This is what the world needs. So thank you. Um, there will be more exciting events coming up so hope, hope you're all looking forward to it. Yay! Yay! <laughs>